Hey guys, welcome to Trapping World. If you want to help support the channel, go to the home page and you know what to do. There's a couple buttons there you can push if you're so inclined. Alrighty, enjoy the show. Stay safe, keep your boots dry. Morning guys. We're, uh, as you can see, up at the entrance to my RTL. Just going to take a run into camp and check on uh, how things are. You know, I wanted to be in here to see what kind of fur sign was still around. But of course, then we go and get three inches of snow last night. But I'm going to also put in a couple more Martin nesting boxes. And I've got some bait to put beside them. Um, it's always just, if you're going to put them there, I'll, uh, you have some bait to attract them there for the first time. So, anyways. We will mosey on, and I'm gonna. I need to cut some firewood too. So, and plus, I haven't been in here in a month. It just uh, partially to keep my sanity too. So, anyways, let's keep going. Hey guys, well, we got into camp here. Everything's good in the camp. Um, a little uh, disappointed in the Martin sign, but like I said, with three inches of snow, you know, it's kind of hard to see a, a Martin track in the old snow with three inches on top. It can be, I think I saw one fresh one since the day, and a couple other that I'm pretty sure were Martin tracks um, with the snow on top, and then tons that could have been Martin or, you know, rabbits or or just some small animal going through but you know I only actually drove through a half a mile of bush the rest was all you know the trail through the cutover not you know places where I normally would see Martin tracks anyways but anyways like I said everything's cool in the cabin here just gonna stop have a coffee um, on the way back, I gotta cut some firewood. I'm cutting some more spruce poles for the beaver traps because well, as soon as the uh, you know it gets later in the season. And uh, yeah, and you know I'm you know sorry about you know video is not coming through too uh, fast and furious, but um, you know this that last one with the coyotes too, you know. Those coyotes sets are more than an hour away from me. And uh, until I get liquid again here, which I'm just waiting for some deposits from some bear hunters, and that'll, boy, you have no idea how tough it is having a, well, maybe you do, I don't know. It's just not, <laughs> not something I've ever experienced, having zero income, you know, for that many months, you know. My wife off work, and uh, and then them selling the restaurant, so I don't have a job either. But anyways, like I said, as soon as I'm liquid again and I've got money for gas, I will uh, be out more and get more uh, trapping done. Um, yeah, it's kind of disappointing too, because those coyotes there, you know, if I had a, been able to check them every three days like I was, you know, I wouldn't have caught three coyotes in one day, obviously, but the two of them wouldn't have been, well, one wouldn't have been totally ruined and the other one wouldn't have been damaged like that, so. But it is what it is. And uh, I will, you know, probably within three weeks, I guess, I'll start getting a bunch of beaver sets out and trap hard before the uh, convention time. Pull them when I go. Well, I don't have to pull the beaver traps unless the ice is leaving fast. Beavers will last a week under the ice, no problem. I've left beavers. I've left beaver traps. Beavers are a hard animal to get hair slip on. Um, I've literally had beavers under the ice for two and a half weeks, and uh, and they're fine. Um, You'll see first the eyeballs will go blue, 
that's when you know that they, they are, they've been under there a long time. And then the nose will start to go blue. But it is, I don't know that I've ever had a beaver with hair slip. You know, I've had them where, you know, maybe I'd caught 20, 25 beavers in a day. And by the time I got around to skinning the, because I never ever used to rough skin anything. So I would clean skin all of them. And, you know, 20, I think my best day ever was 28 beavers. So, you know, that takes several days to get them skinned when you're clean skinning and stretching. Because I wasn't into freezing fur. You know, and I've had beavers where around the back legs and front legs, the, the skin actually was dry, like it had been, you know, stretched as I was skinning it, but still no hair slip. So, yeah, they last an awful long time before they start slipping in cold water, of course. Don't, don't do that in the fall when the water's warmer, but anyways. Yeah, so anyways, like I said, I'll, uh, those coyote snares, you know, hour, 20 minutes away from me, and, uh, you know, like I got one coyote the first time down, I caught nothing the second time, and I, you know, at this point I also can't afford to go drive an hour and a half away and catch nothing, so that's why I left them for six days, and of course then the ravens were on them, but I guess I gotta kind of find that fine line between going too often and, uh, and the ravens, so anyways, kind of nice sitting in here with the fire going. for my coffee water to boil and then I'll go cut some spruce poles for my beaver traps alrighty we shall see you down there later hey guys we're down the trail a little bit from camp I just put in this uh, Martin nesting box here um, not sure if I, I know I mentioned Martin tracks and the lack of them, um, you know, as far as I could tell. And I started to mention wolves and lynx, but they're, if I, in case I, I can't remember what the heck I said. So, anyways, there was tons of, you know, nothing fresh in the last night's snow, but, you know, did, the wolves just traveled my old trail. Um, just, you know, almost from the edge of my trap line. So you're looking seven miles into here. Well, um, well, no, from here, seven miles back, they're almost constantly on the trail. Um, and links all over the place too, so. But, I don't mention, like, when you put a, a box like this, I generally, you know, try and have... These are old cages that I used to... I tried one year for... Um, Fisher, and they didn't work very well. The trap got caught on the wire all the time. It was just a bit of a pain in the ass. But I put them up here now as a, a feeding station for the for the martin. It's to you know get them into the area. I had bait in here when I left. It's all gone, and you can see with all the the bark that's off the tree here. That's something that's been climbing up. So. Um, yeah, it's, uh, you just throw a big chunk of bait in there and it'll attract the martin. Hopefully they'll find the nesting box. The uh, And then, you know, over the winter you just keep throwing some bait in there and get the female martins hanging around and hopefully they'll reproduce in your area. So, I think we're just about up at where I'm going to stop and cut some spruce poles. So. See you down there. Okay, I'm over at the, you know, if, if you're going to fi find a spot to cut these little spruce poles to stockpile them, you know, to carry them with you, because, you know, and I know it's not something you, you think of all the time, but when you're up, you know, in the trap line, and, uh, you know, either walking, cutting trail, doing whatever, but setting traps and stuff, you know, every... In the winter time when you've got eight hours of daylight if you're lucky up north you know every minute counts so you know I've literally gone to pond and not been able to find a pole you know had to walk 
a quarter mile away before I could find a pole to put a beaver trap on. And the same with bait. You, you probably notice in my, when I'm baiting, making bait sets for beaver, I have bait in my sleigh with me all the time. I cut it where it's plentiful, put it in the sleigh and carry it with me. Same as these poles, because like I said, every minute counts. And, uh, but if you can find a spot like this, mixed jack pine and spruce, um, or even just spruce, like this part here is mostly spruce, the jack pine ridge starts right there. And, but the main thing about it, it's got to be so thick that the sun barely gets through because that's where you'll get the little trees start to grow and they'll get up to a certain height and then they die. So now we've got, you know, like right here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, there's a whole bunch on the other side too. All, you know, perfect poles for beaver trapping. You know, cut them off about eight feet long, ten feet long, depending on how deep your water usually is. You can, you know, get away with a bunch that are six feet long. But I have about 40 of them at home. And I'm going to take another crap load out right now and uh, and then I can uh, you know I'll have a enough to get and, and usually you only use one with a bait set but when I'm making sets like those uh, you know the ch channel sets and blocking off I mean some of them I got like eight eight poles to a set so that kind of you know cuts into your stockpile pretty quick but I'll uh, you know get a crap load of these guys cutting and, and drag them out of here with me Alrighty, then I'm going to go up here about another quarter mile and put this second box in. Okay, see you down there. 